international students are big business for British universities. From 2020 to 2021, tuition fees for students coming from non-EU countries were worth around a whopping £7 billion. That's roughly 17% of their total income. No wonder they want more to come. The recruitment agencies do extremely well out of it. And poor universities that might otherwise go to the wall keep going. Our university sector is now completely over-reliant on foreign student money. I've done my own research into what's been going on and I found another side to the story. Far from facilitating higher education for young people struggling to obtain it in their own country, the international study route has once again become a significant immigration back channel. Increasingly, overseas students, mainly from the Indian subcontinent, have been aided by a variety of recruitment agencies. They're coming here ostensibly to study, but are really entering the labour market instead. Some agencies have had to stop recruiting from the Indian subcontinent because they found students have been accepted for courses and issued with visas only to then not show up to the courses they signed up for. For example, some UK universities have stopped accepting students from the Silhet region, the northeastern region of Bangladesh, where many Bangladeshis living in the UK originate. The large Bangladeshi diaspora, of course, then adds to the power of the immigration magnet. In India, there have been reports of exploitation of loopholes in our visa system. Scams such as agents enticing foreign students with large loans in order to facilitate tuition fee proof with the loan refunded, no doubt with interest, once the money has appeared in the client's bank statement and presented as evidence of the availability of funds for the intended course. As for the Home Office controlling what's going on, one official I spoke to on the condition that I did not reveal their identity referred to the chaos within the department that is under huge pressure to deal with an asylum backlog. The vetting of international students is far from a priority, that's what I was told. Bogus students failing to show up for the courses they've signed up for is, sadly, not a new phenomenon. In 2008, following the introduction of the points-based system by the then Labour government, the National Audit Office estimated that in 2012, in the first year of the PBS, between 40,000 and 50,000 students may have entered the UK for work rather than for study. So why are so many non-EU overseas students choosing British universities and then not turning up to their courses? Well, many never intend to attend their courses in the first place. Others undertake a course and work while the study they're studying to pay for their fees and then stay on after completing their studies. According to the ONS at the end of the year of 2019, just 60% of those completing their courses then left the country. Those who stay on follow postgraduate courses and may be joined by dependents with adults being able to work. With over 600,000 overseas students here for five or six years, if not longer, that's up to 40%. 240,000 people staying on indefinitely, often joined them by family members. That is a hell of a lot of people being added to the population.